Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Natalia Rosmal. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Vienna, Italy. I work on uh, congestion control in condensed central vertical. And today I would like to present our paper about uh, our hobby hobby associated mechanism for condensed central network. Uh, I will start by providing a short introduction on condensed central central network in architecture. Uh, in order to describe the most important uh, architectural features of CCN, uh, useful for our work. And uh, where, then uh, I continue by discussing the traffic control problem in CCN and defining, by, uh, and defining the congestion in CCN node. Uh, then I present uh, our cobalt mode intra-shaped mechanism and its performance and his, its performance evaluation oh, sorry, and its performance evaluation uh, and the practical results obtained by uh, by the simulation uh, using the NS2. Uh, then I conclude and uh, discuss uh, the, the future. Uh, so the CCN uh, architecture was first proposed uh, by Van Jacobson and uh, the Park Research Group uh, in the paper network in content in 2009. Uh, for the time being, there is no main contribution on congestion control or traffic engineering in CCN, and uh, all congestion control solutions uh, for, for the existing networks uh, cannot be directly applied to the CCN because the, con the network conception is not the same. Uh, what is the difference uh, between CCN architecture as, and uh, the existing networks? Uh, first, uh, I I have to say that there, were, there are two packet types. Uh, it's the interest packets or packets of, of request that uh, flow from a client to the network. And SRS calls we have a chunk packet that flow from the network to the client. Uh, the path uh, for interest packets and the chunks and corresponding chunk packets are the same. Uh, the base rule that, that exists in, uh, in the content center network that one interest corresponds to only one chunk. <clears throat> What's more, uh, every, every node of CCN network has a cache, and so and that may be located anywhere in the network, and we don't know where, when we receive uh, the response. Uh, thus, the node architecture uh, has to support the content-based schemes, because inside the CCN network there is only content. Uh, What's about traffic control in CCN? Uh, as I said before, this uh, every node has a cache, and so the source uh, cannot be identified, and contain uh, and contain content is cached. We define the congestion as a situation of of airflow of the transmission buffer associated to an output interface, and uh, this situation leads uh, to to the loss of data chunk. Uh, how, wh why, why it occurs? So there is a, there is two uh, two reasons for it. It, uh, it occurs when transmission buffers flow, and if input chunk rate is higher than the output rate of the interface. So what we can do uh, to control uh, the situation? What we can do to to avoid the situation? Uh, we present uh, our hope by hope intrusive mechanism, or just hobbies, uh, that uh, has been designed uh, to anticipate the drop of data chunks uh, due to the buffer overflow. It is not like TCP because TCP starts to react only after uh, after drop of, uh, of one segment. Uh, but but uh, the goal of our congestion control mechanism is to avoid the losses. So. Uh, and what's more, we we want to keep the average queue size around some uh, some fixed value uh, called threshold. So we use the interest packet instead the chunks instead the chunks packet. It's it's one of the advantages of our mechanism because it makes our mechanism proactive. <coughs> Another advantage is that uh, this uh, doesn't depend uh, on uh, on the end user behavior and. Uh, because uh, because this algorithm is implemented directly to to each node of the network. <coughs> uh, why 
we, we have chosen the uh, hope by hope and just the control schemes is that uh, first uh, it's, it's because the data source is not identified and uh, the second reason is that uh, hope by hope scheme provides feedback information more quickly than end-to-end -end scheme. Uh, so for the advantage of our mechanism, uh, now more details about how this works. Uh, here we present the single model of CCN router. We can see the, this is the router. Uh, the interest package comes from uh, the client who is here to the network. And uh, as a response, we have a chance from the network to the client. Uh, this buffer contains only the chance packets. Uh, the E of T is the number of packets, it's time, it's time T, and R is is the threshold B is buffer size. So uh, another interest, interesting parameter is AFT. What is AFT is a response delay. Uh, it's like a round trip delay in TCP, but it is not really round trip delay because uh, it's not fixed. Uh, we, will, uh, we will see in the next uh, slides the, the characteristics of AFT. So, uh, now I explain how how does it work our mechanism. When chunk arrives into the buffer, we take all necessary settings and we compute the shaping rate. This shaping rate will be transformed to to the to the delay uh, called shaping time that will be applied to the interest packets in this queue. Um, so this delay must be sufficient to co to control the, the future chunk rate, and the, uh, and to keep the uh, to keep the queue length around some uh, around this threshold R. In this figure, you can you can see the the little delay for each interest packet that will be added to the system router. This delay called shaping time. <coughs> So what about the response delay parameter? I, as I said before, it's not uh, it's not constant. So uh, we use this parameter in our mechanism as a control loop, and this parameter depends on on the caching policy and the routing mechanism uh, applied in the network. And but but we we suppose that that response delay. Should not change drastically in short time scales. It's, it means that uh, the data, uh, when data are in the same cache, the response delay for each chance will be constant. So during some time, the <coughs> the response delay will be constant. So uh, the process, the shaping rate computation process uses this equation that consists of two parts. The first part of the equation. Uh, is the available capacity to send the chunks at time t, and the second part is uh, the left buffer capacity to keep uh, to keep the chunks. We can see that uh, if number e of t, the number of chunks in the queue, so we can see that e, if e of t uh, higher than uh, suited threshold, this part uh, becomes negative and we must to decrease the shaping rate. In another case, the shaping rate will be increased. Uh, uh, the H is a, is a very interesting parameter, the design parameter. <coughs> it represents uh, uh, the control mode. We will study the, the impact of this parameter on the further. So, uh, First, I define the conversation. The conversation is a stream of interest chunk pairs. So in the general case, uh, there is uh, some conversation for the router, and we need to divide the, the left buffer capacity between all captive conversation at time t. Uh, in our paper, we, uh, we have used the fixed threshold that, uh, that the call R divided by number of active conversation, but uh, it's not really uh, it's not really good because uh, because some, any conversation uh, might uh, not need to use this uh, allocated part of, of capacity. 
So, uh, so now we we have my, sorry. we have modified this uh, this formula as follows. We use the, the relation between number of packets for given conversation divided by total Q length. So it means that we allow each conversation to get the part equal to R uh, multiplied by this uh, factor. Uh, according to the goal of our algorithm, uh, the Q size might uh, show to converse to, to the threshold R. And according to the analytical model that we have developed in our paper, the Q converts exactly, exactly to R. And for multi-conversation case, uh, the Q of each conversation converts to R prime, and the total Q length converts to R. So, uh, so, so the mechanism uh, the, in the analytical model, the mechanism was fine. Concerning the performance evaluation, we have obtained the, the practical result by uh, implementing our, uh, by using our implementation of COBIS in uh, NS2, and uh, we have performed some uh, some scenario from from simple scenario to more complex one. Uh, in the simple scenario, we use uh, just one router with only one conversation and with the multi-conversation scenario. In multi-conversation scenario, we are interested in uh, buffer sharing. So we start from the simple scenario <coughs> with one and, uh, some and many conversations. So the simulation configurations are presented uh, on, this, on this slide. In order to take into account the, the variability of response delay, we have used a random value uniformly distributed in interval from 0 to 1. And this value is generated for every packet, every data packet. Well, so we have studied the behavior of our mechanism with the different value of age. So we can see uh, how it impacts. Okay, this figure represents uh, average Q size as a function of time, uh, the time of in, in seconds. You can see that uh, the Q, the average Q length, converts to R. R is fixed on 100 packets, and we, uh, we see the burst. In this curve, we see the burst in the, at the beginning. Uh, this, these bursts are due uh, to the interval when algorithm is not yet in operation. <coughs> what about uh, age? We see that higher age, higher age, the slower the rate, the, conversi the convergence rate. <coughs> We can observe the same uh, behavior for, for the multi-conversation scenario, but here we are interested in uh, the buffer, buffer sharing. So we have performed some uh, simulation scenarios with the different conversation rate. Uh, and uh, the rate of conversation one is the maximum rate, and then uh, the rate, of, the rate of conversation 2 is less than the rate of conversation 1. It's done. So, um, <coughs> so you can see that uh, the average Q for each conversation converts to R, R prime, and the total Q length converts to R. Uh, in this uh, simulation, R is fixed to 300, 300 uh, chunks. Now the more the more complex scenario, the more interesting one is uh, the scenario uh, the network of nodes. We use two conversations. The first conversation flows from client one to the node three, and the data for this conversation is in the cache of node three. The conversation two flows from client two to the server. The server uh, generates the rest the different responsibility for each uh, for each data packet. Uh, so we're interested in uh, 
at the buffer state of node 3 and the chunk cellular rate for, for every conversation. In order to, to, better, to study better this, uh, this scenario, the conversation 2 starts before conversation 1. Then uh, during some time we have two conversations at the same time. And, uh, and then the conversation 2 be becomes inactive. Okay, what, what will happen? This figure uh, illustrates the average Q length as a, as a function of time. Uh, we can see that uh, the Q is in T uh, until the conversation 1 starts. And then the Q starts to fill up and uh, converge to the objective. Concerning the chunk rate, uh, in the interval, in the time interval from 0 to 20 seconds, we have only conversation 2. And so this conversation use all the uh, uh, of res resources. And at the interval from 20 seconds to 60 seconds, we have two conversations at the same time. And the rotor resources are divided a shared frame. When the conversation 2 becomes inactive, the conversation 1 starts to use all the node resources. We have also studied the multicast scenario. <coughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting scenario because we use the interest segregation. Uh, we have performed the topology with, uh, with three clients. Uh, and the, the cap link capacity for each uh, interface are, are the difference. So the capacity of the first client uh, Higher than capacity for, for the second uh, interface. And, uh, so, so you, you can see that the the Q length for for the interface with the minimum capacity is converges to to R, and another buffers are T. Uh, it's its behavior, its behavior is logical because we use the minimal, uh, the minimal capacity uh, to, to compute the shape of head. So, so in this case, uh, the, the Q of, of the interface with the minimal capacity will converge to the, to the R and the another buffer will be T. So uh, we have presented our whole by whole data shaping mechanism that uh, allow to dynamically adjust the intersecting rate uh, in order to control the future data rate. Uh, what more, we keep the, f the Q, Q length uh, around uh, some fixed threshold. Uh, we also explore its performance, and uh, we, we can conclude that uh, the mechanism is performed as designed. Uh, the future work will extend the analysis of uh, of the of all this, and we uh, we will study more complex scenarios. So we will uh, consider the content of differentiation. Uh, we will explore the complexity and scalability of our mechanism and uh, interaction with uh, the eventual <coughs> error control mechanisms. Okay. If you have any questions, you can you can ask. <laughs> so questions. It's nasty question. <laughs> no, it's not nasty. It's uh, among the, the stuff of the future world. But if you decided to, to 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 place this functionality inside the, uh, each router, so what do you expect the overhead for uh, for the queuing uh, management uh, would be? Because you, you talked about several uh, conversations, so the router must monitor the conversations. What do you? What is your feeling about the overhead for managing uh, uh, 
per flow, let's say, per conversation uh, state for the for the queue. Very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some feeling about this about the. So now, in our metropism, we are based on the active conversation, and uh, the question is about uh, about the key management. It's about the complexity. About the complexity of the scheme being implemented on the routes, because until now we know that all, all these congestion avoidance and uh, mechanisms are implemented at the edge. The network. So you put this intelligence inside the network, and it seems, in a CCN perspective, a natural choice because things change in CCN. But what do you expect the overhead to be for the for your network to, to, to be able to support this intelligence, support this congestion mechanism? Okay. Uh, it's a very interesting it's true that uh, in re reality there is uh, there is main conversation in the network. There is uh, there is too many conversations <laughs> in the network, and uh, we don't yet uh, study the, the complexity of our mechanism. But we are, uh, but uh, we use the, um, only active conversation. It means uh, that if uh, there is a, there is a packet in the queue, this conversation is, is active. Uh, but in the case of when uh, we have uh, a lot of conversation at the same time, or we, uh, yes, we will explore it. Uh, but we do check accounting, so that's easy. So now the issue is how many conversations do you need to monitor? And I think the point is that you just need to monitor the active conversation, which basically have one chunk on the queue. So in that scale, I mean, that's something that many people have uh, studied in the past, starting from ATM. Now there's another issue, which is, is it realistic to basically embed this kind of mechanism in every single node? And well, that's another more global issue within CCM. And she knew the answer, but she's too uh, stressed. So you have to remember this. <laughs> Relax. The first talk. That's why. But you might have other questions, of course. <laughs> so wait to relax. Relax. <laughs> another question. This is what we do, but in our in our performance analysis, we use the same parameter just in order to study how it it's impact. Uh, on the behavior, but uh, in our paper we have developed an analytical model and uh, the, where we, we have demonstrated that each parameter has to be uh, has to be relied with, uh, with the rest of the with the rest of the okay. We change it possibly from chunk to chunk, that you take uh, a random between zero and one second, basically. Uh, I have two questions. So the first is whether the using a different interval has a huge impact on the performance, so whether the control loop you propose is sensitive to this parameter. And the second one is, uh, in that case, you take every sample uh, at random. But it may, that, uh, it may be that if you achieve a cache, or if you reach a cache, then this cache also have the subsequent chunks. So it may be that the, the A parameter does not change that much from chunk to chunk, but it might change uh, suddenly from in, in different modes. So have you considered having different processes instead of a completely uniform process for AT? So is the control loop affected by the range? And is the control loop affected by the kind of process you consider but for ADT? Okay, then understand the question. Uh, it's, uh, it's true that uh, we use uh, only the interval from 0 to 1. It's, uh, maybe it's not sufficient. But we, we change the, uh, the delay for, e for every packet. It means uh, in, our, in, in our performance analysis, we, we use a different delay for each packet. And we don't use the, the same delays uh, during some time. 
uh, but it's true that, uh, that if uh, in reality it is possible, the, the uh, response D will be hardly ch changed, and uh, it will, uh, it will, uh, will to, uh, it leads uh, to the reverse uh, in our system. So uh, we can uh, demonstrate. We we have tried to study the the influence of, uh, <coughs> of response delay. So we you you can see the the burst. This uh, this situation is due uh, to the um, is due when uh, when res real response delay uh, is higher than. Uh, predicted one, so we use the prediction mechanism in order to... Uh, and uh, during this time, the buffer will be, will be in T, and then we have a burst. Uh, the burst, uh, but during this time, the, uh, the response delay will to three seconds, for example, for, for this, uh, for this uh, study. Uh, when when Julie, uh, when Julie is constant, uh, the algorithm will set up, uh, will uh, will adapt and will uh, to will converge to to R. So uh, so yes, the influence of response to is uh, the short burst. Time for a very last short question. <coughs> and meanwhile, I, I invite the second speaker to go <coughs> in there and start. Uh, <coughs> we have time for a very small, nasty question. <laughs> <laughs>